Vazu, it is such a pleasure having you with us today. Thanks for being with us. Thank you so much for having me here. Thank you. Vazu, as part of the festivities celebrating our 50th edition of the International MBA, we have created an exclusive group called the 50 Leaders Reinventing the World, and you are part uh, of that group thanks to your career trajectory with a remarkable impact. I'm curious, what were some of the key takeaways from your time at IE that have helped you in your career? Um, I think there were many because, you know, every sort of, every, every course we did or every uh, new person I met, I learned something new. But three big takeaways for me, one was being able to work in groups of people who come from a different professional background, come from different countries and often different age groups as well. Um, so I think that really puts you in a tough spot sometimes. And I loved, in retrospect, I love that we did that. And I think I, a lot of my learnings are from those group meetings and the group projects. Um, I think the second thing was the cultural nuances. Uh, again, outside of, um, you know, just work, work and group projects, we were spending a lot of time with each other and you understand what is and isn't appropriate in many cultures. And that's what I loved about IE. I think one of the reasons I picked IE is because of the diversity. Um, and I think that comes in really handy when you work with, you know, partners who are in other markets or you work with managers, peers who are in other markets. So another really big learning there. Um, and I think the third one was, interestingly, I realized what I did not want to do. So I think it's as important as knowing what you want to do. And as we went through many of the core classes, I was pretty much eliminating things that I know I will never want to do in life. Uh, and I think IE really helped me figure that out. So I'm very glad we were able to help you to figure out what you don't want. <laughs> <laughs> but let me come actually back to, to the second takeaway that you pointed out. Right? I mean, you said, well, the, the cultural diversity or the diversity in general is a, is a key treat, um, is a key feature of the experience at IE. Completely agree. Let's, let's, let's move now maybe to your experience at Spotify. Um, because I think it fits really nicely with your work that you're doing as well. Yeah. Um, Spotify right now is launching in 36 new languages across the globe, including 12 languages in India. Um, what challenges does this pose for you in communication and how does it affect brand identity in a country with so many different languages? So I think coming into India, we knew where it's almost like entering a continent, right? It's, it's not a country because every few hundred kilometers, the culture changes, the language changes, the food changes, the attire changes. So it is like a different country um, every few hundred kilometers. Um, but I think the launch of new languages actually strengthens what we're doing here because we are adding more uh, features for our local users so you know um, if like six months ago I was to go and try and communicate in a Hindi speaking market or a Tamil speaking market it would have been somewhat harder especially because the interface wasn't available in in that language right so even if somebody wanted to use Spotify they may not have been very keen to because they're like, you know, this English interface makes us a bit uncomfortable. But the fact that we've got these 12 languages and these are some of the most spoken languages in the country actually makes my work easier because I have another proof point to say, hey, here's why you should be on Spotify. You know, we've also removed the language barrier. Um, and I think when it comes to brand identity, if you look at Spotify globally, um, no matter what we do in markets, it always ties back to the global brand identity. And I think that's based on a few things. One is the kind of team we are, you know, so people who join Spotify work very closely. We're a very lean team. Um, we all work across markets. So for India, for instance, there was research done for at least a couple of years before we launched in the market, right? And we were like, okay, this is what India is and this is what Spotify is and how do we sort of meet somewhere in the middle and make this work? So I think it's actually been a lot of localization, but all of that localization ties back to what we are as a brand globally. So our local marketing campaigns, the, the curation we do, the user interface on the app, everything has a very global feel to it. The content, however, is very local. 
So let me stay a little bit on that topic. Mm -hmm. um, I know that there are more than 600 play playlists of local Indian content on, on Spotify. Um, and you already touched a little bit on this. Um, and I wanted to drill a little bit deeper. So how does Spotify India balance the demands of local and, and global business needs? So wherever we go, there are two things that really matter to Spotify. One is localization that I briefly touched upon and the second is personalization, right? So I think these are two things that really also differentiate us from most other companies in this space, whether globally or in, in India. Um, so we've been able to use, of course, human expertise, but also algorithm uh, at the back end to make sure that we are catering to local needs, but also, again, as I said, everything that ties back to what we've got globally, right? So uh, we could launch features here, but those features have been tested in other similar markets. So to give you an example, look at premium, right? Premium is, I would say about 45% of our users across the world use Spotify premium. India, however, is a free market. Um, you know, people haven't paid for music. It's predominantly been driven by piracy. So we launched here with like multiple premium plans at price points that we knew that people wouldn't mind paying. And very recently, we launched something called Premium Mini, which is just for daily use or weekly use, right? It's not something that happens in other parts of the world. Um, and we did it in Indonesia and India, because these are two markets that behave very differently from like many other countries in the world. So I think um, if you look at the product that we launched, it was very local, but ultimately it ties back to the entire premium strategy we have across the world. Thank you so much. Um, if you would have to pick something, what do you think was the most exciting part of introducing Spotify to the Indian consumer for you? Um, well, I've been using Spotify since I was at IE. Uh, so I've been using Spotify since 2014. And, um, you know, when I came back to India, of course, I, I did not have Spotify anymore. And, um, you know, there's no shame in admitting that, you know, I, I used VPN as well to continue using Spotify, as did many other users in the market, right? So um, I think it was really, um, I, I felt a lot of pride uh, when we launched it in India because there was already so much love for the brand. Um, and like as we were going live, people were downloading the app. Um, and it was just fantastic to see um, that kind of love for the brand and for the platform. I think the other really fun part of it was, again, the fact that we were able to bring a product. We never localized a product the way we localized it for India. So, for instance, India had language onboarding. You know, in most other countries, you know, yes, English, maybe the local language, right? But in India, we had to give people like many more choices when it came to you know, pick the language you want your music to be in, right? And even some someone like me would pick at least three to four languages. Um, so I think it made it really interesting. And I think I was really proud of the fact that we're bringing this global brand to India um, that is already catering to what local listeners want. Um, another fun example is actor playlists. Like actors is not a thing anywhere in the world or at least not that i know of right because bollywood and films are such a huge phenomenon in the country um so a lot of the playlists we made locally focused on actors um you know and they were called starring whoever the actor was which was extremely unique to the market so i think i was really excited about the indian spotify we were bringing to the market so let's maybe stay a little bit on that. Sure. And I think it's the perfect segue to my next question. Let's talk a little bit more generally about the entertainment industry and the audio entertainment industry. Um, how have the music and the podcast industry evolved where there's, let's say, other trends in the audio, in audio entertainment? Sure. So um, I think we're seeing a lot of interesting um, companies come up around audio in general, audio entertainment. Uh, for music and podcasts, I think one of the most interesting things um, that has happened is access to analytics and insights. So, um, you know, when you sold a CD maybe or a cassette maybe years ago, you had a sense of how many cassettes have been sold and from where, but you didn't really know who's buying that. 
um you know yeah maybe people would come to your concert and you would like look at that audience and be like okay you know i think they're approximately this year's old or i know this is my most popular song with them but i think technology has really changed that which is fantastic so we have platforms for podcasters and for artists that will tell them okay these are the countries you're being streamed in or this is where your streams are coming from so is it coming from spotify's curated playlist is it coming from spotify's algorithmic playlist are people finding music on your profile um are are users curating you in their playlist right so that depth in what is happening with your music and who is consuming it and where i think that is a really interesting trend and it's definitely here to stay um i think another really interesting thing is that uh a lot of the artists and creators i would say are using spotify platforms like spotify and even social media to engage with their listeners very differently today than they did maybe even one year ago because there has been no face time right so uh, they they're all finding newer ways to interact with their listeners um they're using platforms where they have you know where they can reach the world uh, because it's it's so much about like cross uh country collaboration now right so if you look at a lot of the so bts which is of course one of the biggest um kpop bands they have done some really interesting collaborations with artists in the us so i think this crossover is really interesting one artists becoming big in other markets but also collaborating with artists from other markets so that they can reach a much wider audience with that um and i think on the podcast front one thing that is again been fascinating over the last year is the creation of podcasts the number of people who are creating podcasts is impressive um i'll just leave it at that and india has been uh, at least from a spotify perspective india has been one of the fastest growing markets um that created podcasts on anchor which is a platform that we have to sort of create and distribute podcasts so yeah i think both uh, audio segments are booming um music is of course way massio just because it's been around for much longer um but you know look at people like Michelle Obama who are now doing podcasts and and many others i think it's the same across countries right you'll see many of these big names um, dabbling around a bit with audio doing podcasts so i think the future is definitely bright So Vasu let me come to my last question um maybe a bit more personal so what do you listen to uh, when you switch on Spotify a lot and everything so um i think i listen to a lot of instrumental music which is you know um it can be soft pop instrumental it can be edm instrumental just because it helps me concentrate better if i know lyrics to a song i can't work so i have to listen to music i haven't heard before or music that has no lyrics um and currently i'm listening to this really fun playlist called global grooves which is just music from across the world um great for like at least for me when i focus on work a uh, podcast i love true crime and horror um so and there is some really good content uh, and in investigative journalism so um i'm currently listening to serial which is actually uh, one of those podcasts that gets people hooked to podcasts um it's a relatively um old podcast um and science versus um highly recommend that one because you will just be fascinated by the kind of conversations they cover and at the end of the episode you're like really what so it's it's quite interesting um and i think one podcast i would recommend to everyone is um wind of change i don't know if you've heard of it but you should definitely give it a listen vasus thank you so much for for sharing with us your very varied interests in, in spotify and podcast thanks so much and obviously thank you so much for being with us and providing us a little bit more insights about spotify and obviously as well the indian market and once again congratulations to making it into our 50 leaders reinventing the world thanks so much thank you thank you so much so happy to be here